Let us pray. Gracious God, our way in the wilderness, guide us by your word through these 40 days and minister to us with your Holy Spirit so that we may be reformed, restored, and renewed through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. A reading from the book of Ephesians, chapter 5, verses 8 through 14. For once you were darkness, but now in the Lord you are light. Live as children of light, for the fruit of the light is found in all that is good and right and true. Try to find out what is pleasing to the Lord. Take no part in the unfruitful works of darkness, but instead expose them. For it is shameful even to mention what such people do secretly. But everything exposed by the light becomes visible. For everything that becomes visible is light. Therefore it says, Sleeper, awake, rise from the dead, and Christ will shine on you. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Gospel according to John, chapter 9, selected verses. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. As he walked along, he saw a man blind from birth. His disciples asked him, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Jesus answered, Neither this man nor his parents sinned. He was born blind so that God's works might be revealed in him. We must work the works of him who sent me while it is day. Night is coming when no one can work. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. When he had said this, he spat on the ground and made mud with saliva and spread the mud on the man's eyes, saying to him, Go, wash in the Siloam, which means scent. Then he went and washed and came back able to see. The neighbors and those who had seen him before as a beggar began to ask, is this not the man who used to sit and beg? Some were saying, it is he. Others were saying, no, but it's someone like him. He kept saying, I am the man. But they kept asking him, then how were your eyes opened? He answered, the man called Jesus made mud and spread it in my eyes and said to me, Go to Siloam and wash. And then I went and washed and received my sight. They brought to the Pharisees the man who had formerly been blind. Now it was a Sabbath day when Jesus made the mud and opened his eyes. Then the Pharisees also began to ask him how he had received his sight. He said to them, he put mud on my eyes, then I washed, and now I see. Some of the Pharisees said, this man is not from God, for he does not observe the Sabbath. The Jews did not believe that he had been blind and had received his sight until they called the parents of the man who had received his sight and asked them, is this your son? who you say was born blind, how then does he see? His parents answered, We know that this is our son, and that he was born blind. But we do not know how he now sees, nor do we know who opened his eyes. Ask him. He's of age. He will speak for himself. His parents said this 
because they were afraid of the Jews. For the Jews had already agreed that anyone who confessed Jesus as the Messiah would be put out of the synagogue. So for the second time, they called the man who had been blind. And they said to him, Give glory to God. We know that this man is a sinner. He answered, I do not know whether he is a sinner. One thing I do know, though I was blind, now I see. And they said to him, What did he do to you? How did he open your eyes? And he answered them, I have told you already, and you would not listen. Why do you want to hear again? Do you also want to become his disciples? And then they reviled him. You were born entirely in sins, and are you trying to teach us? And they drove him out. Jesus heard that they had driven him out, and when he found him, he said, Do you believe in the Son of Man? He answered, And who is he, sir? Tell me, so that I may believe in him. Jesus said to him, You have seen him, and you are speaking to me. He said, Lord, I believe. And he worshipped him. Jesus said, I came into this world for judgment so that those who do not see may see, and those who do see may become blind. Some of the Pharisees near him heard this and said to him, Surely we are not blind, are we? Jesus said to them, If you were blind, you would not have sin. But now that you say, We see, your sin remains. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Even with all the talk about the spread of the coronavirus and schools closing for weeks, I didn't think for a minute that we might actually cancel worship until Friday afternoon when I learned that people were calling the church to find out if we were still having worship, and that the Methodist churches, including our near neighbor Grace, were closing by order of the bishop. So I called our elders and our general presbyter, Max Kolnick. It was a difficult decision and truly heartbreaking for us. But it was a decision made for love to care for and protect one another. I'm here today to remind you that you are loved. You are loved by the Lord, you are loved by the church, and you are loved by me. We are Christ's new creation. We are a people of hope and faith. We are the redeemed. The Holy Spirit still lives within us, is working among us and unites us as Christ's body, whether we're together here in worship or not. We have not been abandoned, oh no. This fear that we are experiencing, are any of you experiencing some fear? This fear that we are experiencing, this doesn't come from the Lord. Okay. Paul says in 2 Timothy 2, 7, God does not give us a spirit of fear, but gives us power, love, and self-discipline. And as to the confusing reports and general disorder around us, listen to Hebrews 13, 9. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. 
And 1 Corinthians 14.3, God is not a God of confusion, but of peace. Our loving Lord hasn't sent a virus to punish us. Illness and disease are in the world because we live in frail mortal bodies in a fallen creation. Christ never promises we won't suffer. He says, pick up your crosses and follow me. And that he will strengthen us until the end until he comes again. Here in the Gospel of John chapter 9, we have proof that Christ desires to heal us and make us whole. This is one of many healing stories in the New Testament. Here a man was born blind. And what do Christ's own disciples, along with the religious leaders, believe? His, blind, his blindness is a punishment from God. That's what they believed. They want to know, was it the man or his parents who sinned? Jesus sets them straight. Neither. He was born blind so that God's works might be revealed in him. Blindness from ancient times was linked to poverty. If one was blind, one was limited in their ability to work and earn money, and the stigma of blindness would separate them from polite, pious society. But also, blindness could be caused by living in poverty without adequate shelter, care, and nutrition. So he was one of many blind men. He was a blind man. This is truly a marginalized man, a despised outcast, who has no choice but to sit and beg, ask people to give him food and money so he can survive. And this is the one whom Christ chooses to bring to the center of the Jewish community's attention and reveal God's glory. This is the one. Everyone is talking about what happened to this man and what it says about who Jesus is. This man's worldly insignificance is emphasized by his not being identified by name. I'm sure he had a name. I'm sure his parents gave him a name. Even his parents don't call him by name. He is merely a, ma a man blind since birth. And after he is healed, he is the man who had formerly been blind. And some don't believe he is the same person. They disregard the miracle right in front of their very eyes. Do we do that sometimes, my friend? Do we choose to be unhappy or ungrateful rather than see the miracle of blessings that are right in front of us every day? You are, are a miracle of blessings. In this story, the lowly, oppressed, and hungry are exalted by the Lord, while the wealthy and proud are brought down. Mary predicted this in her song after learning she would give birth to a holy child, son of the Most High. For nothing, the angel declares, will be impossible with God. And how does the light of the world bring healing to a man blind since birth. This is important. His blindness since birth and the method of his healing like a rebirth. Listen. Just as God drew the first human, Adam, close to him when he formed him from the dust of the ground, Adam, and breathed life into him, Jesus, the one through whom all things were created, spits on the ground, mixes his saliva with the adama, and touches the man's eyes, spreading the mud of the ground and saliva on him. And then he tells him to wash in the pool of Siloam, which means scent. This word of Hebrew origin reminds me of the Greek word apostolos, or apostle, as we translate it. It means 
the one being sent with a message. In John 7, 37 and 38, it was to the Siloam water that the Lord points and says in a loud voice, let anyone who is thirsty come to me and let the one who believes in me drink. And out of the believer's heart shall flow rivers of living water. Washing in the pool, the man accepts Christ's invitation to be the one who is sent with a message without knowing what it will mean. Everything the man used to be, poor, marginalized, outcast, isolated, unidentified, and despised, walking in literal darkness, is washed away. History, gone. The despised sinner enthusiastically receives the gift of faith with his healing. And the one whose own parents turn their backs on him, fearing they will be rejected by their community, says one thing, I do know. Though I was blind, now I see. Then as he is driven out from the place where he's lived his entire life up to now, Christ finds him just as he always comes to find us wherever we are and invites all of us to become like this man, one who is sent to bear witness to the light, the one in whom is life, and declare, Lord, I believe. Friends, the light of the world can help us see what is happening today in a different way. We no longer walk in darkness. That's, that's done. We are the redeemed. Resist the temptation to be fearful in this health crisis. Let us see with the eyes of eternity what is an opportunity for ministry. For it is in our prayer Open our eyes, Lord, that we may see that we will find our own strength, our own healing. Our joy will be restored. Do you need your joy restored? Say amen if you need your joy restored. Amen. It's up to us to reveal the glory of the Lord. We can choose love. We can choose that. Everything we do, every healing word and prayer that we say, every encouraging card we write, every caring phone call we make, especially to our shut-ins and those caregivers that now can't even get in to visit them, every caring phone call, every act of charity, especially now, will make a difference, not just in one life, but in many lives. One act of goodness will lead to another, and another, and another. Every act of faith will lead to more until we are all transformed. It's like Presbyterian minister Fred Rogers said after the terrorist attacks of 9-11. No matter what our particular job, especially in our world today, said the star of Mr. Rogers' neighborhood. We are all called to be tikkun olam, repairers of creation. The Hebrew words tikkun olam refer to actions taken to improve society, including caring for others. Thank you for whatever you do, he said, wherever you are, to bring joy and light, and hope, and faith, and pardon, and love to your neighbor and yourself. This was good advice for a devastated nation after 9-11. And it's good advice for us today as we struggle with uncertainties, hoping and praying for God's protection and healing for all. 
and with our acts of love for God and neighbor. We declare the good news of God's salvation and say to the Lord, I believe. Let us pray. Holy One, thank you for sending the light of the world so that we may be your redeemed. Open our eyes, Lord, we pray, so that we might see as you see, hope as you hope, love as you love, live as you want us to live, and believe as you call us to believe. Forgive us for our fears, and selfish inclinations during this time of crisis. Give wisdom and all the necessary resources to the medical community to help and heal the sick. Protect caregivers and first responders, Lord. Grant wisdom to leadership in our churches, communities, and countries around the world. And be with all who feel isolated, lonely, and afraid. Give us all the gifts of the Spirit, peace, patience, kindness, faith, endurance, and self-control, and most of all, love that transforms darkness into light, until all humanity hear the good news of your salvation and respond, Lord, I believe.
For we know that all things work together for good good for those who love God, who are called according to God's purpose. We are convinced that neither death nor life nor angels nor rulers nor things present nor things to come nor powers nor height nor depth nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us the love of God, in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. I would like to take a moment to share joys and concerns with one another. Would anyone like to share? Lauren, do you, do you want to say about the car accident that just happened? There's some details about the car um, my brother-in-law had a severe semi-accident on 99 near Bakersfield, California, mm -hmm. and uh, the truck, you can you can barely recognize it's a semi. He's, they cut him out, lost a foot, and they had to sew parts of his face back on and things. Mm -hmm. So please keep the family in your prayers for the McIntyres, and uh, he definitely needs lots of prayers. He is hanging in there. He's in critical condition, but hanging in there. So thanks. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Lauren, for sharing. Sure, so we will, both of you, we will keep him in prayer as he recovers from this accident. He's still in critical care at this at this moment. Anything else to share with one another? I'd, I'd like to keep lifting up those who are in care facilities at this point and just feeling so lonely and forgotten because even their families cannot come and visit them. We have four right now at Alter Care that cannot be visited from our congregation. Others now? I'd just like to say how thankful I am for technological tools that allow us to still be in touch with the people that we love during this hard time. Yes. Uh, it's yes. going to change a lot about, especially how teachers are going to work in the next few weeks, so some prayers for that too, but we have options that we wouldn't have had when I was a kid. So. Yes, that's absolutely. And we should keep our, our children and our teachers in prayers for these next few weeks because this is you know something that's never happened before something they've never had to deal with and how how do we continue the education and the well-being of everyone that's a good question others um requests or even joys to share yeah one more for those who have not yet allowed christ to enter into their life because yes. times like these without a power greater than themselves has to be terrifying Yes. Where we can believe that it's going to be okay. I don't know what they do. So we they can have faith. Prayers. Yeah. When you have Jesus, you 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 are the redeemed. You believe, and you don't have to be afraid. Amen. We'll pray for that. I heard there was a birthday party going on today. That's that's a joy, Debbie. Yes, it is. Um, today we're celebrating our grandson's third birthday, <laughs> and we are going to be having his party downstairs and one o'clock today so I'm very thankful that we're able to do that here today and we don't have a big crowd so it should be okay. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Friends will you join me in prayer? In Christ Jesus we have a great high priest who knows our weakness and suffering therefore with boldness let us seek God's grace. With boldness we pray for the church by your grace, make us children of light, reflecting the glory of our Savior, Jesus Christ, the light of the world. With boldness, we pray for the earth. Renew in us a vision of the world restored, shining with the splendor of your glory, unstained by the sin of human greed. With boldness, we pray for all nations, Raise up new leaders among us, new shepherds who will defend the weak and lead us all in the paths of peace. With, with boldness, boldness we pray for this community. Help us to notice our neighbors in need. Give us the courage and compassion to see them all as your beloved children. With boldness, we pray for loved ones. Accompany those who walk in darkness. Protect those who are facing danger. Comfort those who live in fear. 
To you, God, we entrust these prayers, knowing that you alone can provide grace to help in our time of need. In the name of our great high priest, who has passed through the heavens, Jesus Christ, our sovereign and savior, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Thank you. 